Hi. How well does your cassette deck record on old school pure chrome cassettes? If you record it at 0 dB, does it also play back at 0 dB? Or does it play back at a level something like here, minus 8 dB, or maybe peaking at minus 6 dB? In this video, I'm going to attempt to record on an old school pure chrome cassette at 0 dB level. When it comes to true chromium dioxide type 2 cassettes, most people into this format know they are superior to type 1 cassettes. However, not everyone knows this, but chromium dioxide cassettes also have the lowest noise floor of all cassette types, including metal type 4 cassettes and way lower noise levels than type 1s and other non-chrome type 2s. The biggest advantage of metal type 4 cassettes is they can be driven harder, meaning you can record on them louder than on any other cassette type. Another factor is generally Japanese decks are not optimized to use chromium dioxide cassettes, but their own type 2 cassettes. And this came down to licensing issues. The Japanese industry was unwilling to pay licensing fees and developed their own formulations. The Japanese electronics industry dominated globally, therefore making chromium dioxide tape incompatible with the majority of equipment. In the beginning, only Sony had exclusive rights to the chromium dioxide pigment. Later on, even Sony got rid of that arrangement. History aside, can you make an exceptionally good recording on a chromium dioxide cassette tape on a Japanese cassette deck? Let's find out. To demonstrate what I'm talking about, I'm going to use an old school pre recorded chrome cassette with no type 2 notches. And I'm going to use a Yamaha KX380, which copes better with uh, chrome dioxide cassettes, um, better than the deck above it. Now it's just tuning itself to the tape. Now rewinds and listens to what it's recorded and adjusts parameters accordingly. And now it's ready to go. Now I'm going to record 110 hertz tone on the tape at 0 dB. Then I'm going to rewind it and listen to it myself. And looking at the VU meters, the tone that was recorded at 0 dB is playing back at minus 6 dB. Now I'm going to try something else. This time I'm going to record the same tone. But I'm going to um, adjust the bias to full positive. And also I'm going to boost up the level. To just here at plus two. Let's listen to what that sounds like. And now it's playing back at minus four decibels. 
Now I'm going to push the levels up and push the cassette harder. If I record at plus four, let's see where that brings us to on playback. That should be enough. And on playback, plus 4 equals Dolby level. Not quite 0, just uh, Dolby level. Is that too hot for music? Let's find out. So let's check that out. Still full positive bias. And now I've got this song set to play, or rather to record at plus 4. Let's begin. Let's rewind and listen.
Okay, I think um, you get the picture. And I would like to say, I think the objective has been achieved. However, I would like to add that not every cassette deck is that compliant to real chromium dioxide cassette recording. For instance, the deck above, which is a Denon DR-M24HX and about double the price, distorted at about two plus two decibels recording level. The silver mid-70s deck in this picture distorted at zero decibels and sounded horrible. And the deck on top of the silver deck in this picture is quite happy replicating those results and it's the Technics RSB705. I also wanted to add this cassette was a duplicator chromium dioxide formulation. Chrome cassette tapes come in various formulations and what I've done here may or may not work on a consumer chrome cassette tape. I also want to thank Gary from Gary Keep It Simple channel here on YouTube for his video that inspired me to look into the subject of making these cassettes not only recordable but to be used to their full capacity. Here I'm using Gary's method to establish biasing and levels for a pure chrome duplicator cassette on a three head Technics RSB705. It's thanks to Gary's knowledge that I was able to set up this tape and it's needed parameters to get out of it what you have seen in this video. Here, the thing just hits a spot right there. This is a video I took when experimenting with a method. For my own reference. Thanks for watching and see you next or the previous video.